Hello! So if you have recently updated your Unreal Engine version like I just did, you may have come across something peculiar if you're using the procedural content generation framework. And that is that this input that we're used to seeing for our landscape in order to get our surface sampler connected to points that we can use to spawn meshes and all the good stuff that we can do using PCG in the most recent version of the engine no longer seems to exist. We just have this input node, you know, want to connect our surface sampler up it seems like it does this weird conversion thing and we're not sure and we're using all these tutorials on YouTube and they all seem to be out of date this is not what you do the developers over at epic have decided to separate the node to get point from our landscape from that input node and I have a few theories about why that is but I'll get to that in a second now what we're gonna do instead of using this input and connecting it to the surface sampler or expanding and getting the landscape data is we're now gonna right click and make a new node which is gonna get our landscape data and that is called get landscape data so it's this new purple node and we can connect this out up to the surface sampler and it's gonna give us the exact same result as we would have gotten our older approach here and connecting our landscape input to our surface sampler. If you have a recent version of Unreal Engine, I think it's 5.4 or beyond, this is now what we're going to do. So if you're doing a tutorial and it seems a little different looking than you're used to, this is probably the only difference that you just have to make as an adjustment if you're doing one of my tutorials or somebody else's tutorials on PCG. This is all you have to do to get it to work the same way it did before. I believe that the reason that they did this change is that if we were going to populate points on a mesh we're using a mesh surface to get our points from similar to our landscape points we would use a points from mesh node you can see it's also purple and it has a similar output and I think what they're doing is unifying these two inputs so that these two types of data are gotten in the same way also with this new node we have a few options we can access in it so if I click on the get landscape data node here we have some new options we have get height only we have get layer weights we have get actual to reference, get physical materials and component coordinates. And these are all useful types of data that we can use in our graphs and now can be activated or deactivated as part of this node. And I have a feeling that there's some efficiency updates that come along with this. This is just a theory, but I'm kind of wondering if they also broke this out because you can actually just cut off what types of data that are running through this node so that you're not getting everything all the time. So I've noticed that a bunch of you have been really frustrated about changes like this about PCG in the comments sometimes you've been like trying to really follow tutorials but they don't look the same and I know it can be really frustrating but I guess I want to suggest that if we take a step back and we think about what we actually do really like about Epic Games and about Unreal Engine and it is the fact that they are cutting edge and they keep releasing new features and new updates this recent update to Unreal Engine 5.4 has been amazing and some of the stuff they've added have been real game changers to lots of different areas animation environment art lots of different disciplines they've just added some really useful stuff and the engine runs smoother all these updates have to happen iteratively well, I know that when they first released PCG, it wasn't gonna be in its final form. And I know that we wouldn't want Epic to not continue to improve its tools, continue to make updates and organization changes that are gonna make our future lives better. In the moment, it can be a little frustrating to feel like you're trying to shoot a moving target, especially as you're learning these tools, because I mean, I know when I saw that, I was like, oh no, you know, like all of my tutorials are gonna be out of date because, you know, I always get data points in the old way and now they're gonna be in the new way. So I get it and I understand. I also think that we should just be patient and, you know, like accept these as we come and I'll make new videos about the new ways to do it. And I think we don't really want Epic to stop developing and updating these tools so quickly because it gives us just more things to play with and empowers us to make more things. And it's just a great thing to have such an iterative and quickly updating tool. But there are downsides and one of the downsides is things like this that will just change and, you know, like mess up all the tutorials I've made on PCG. Thankfully, I have tested this, and if you have old PCG graphs that you've built using earlier versions of the engine, they will still work, and they will still maintain that input for the landscape that we had. I'm in Unreal Engine 5.4 here. We can see that I still have an input with the landscape for you know an older PCG graph that I built on a previous tutorial. It still works, it still has that input, but if I make a new graph, it will look like this new situation here where there's no landscape input. It, nothing is 
broken in terms of your graphs and moving forward, we're gonna start using this approach. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, shoot me a thumbs up or a comment and let me know if there's any other changes or features in Unreal Engine 5.4 that you'd like to see a video on to make sure that you understand them correctly and know how things are changing. I'm gonna to continue to do videos on topics like this as the engine updates and new things are changed and made better. If you are looking to make your own stylized Unreal Engine environments procedurally using PCG, maybe you're a solo developer and you're trying to build all of your environments from scratch and you don't really know where to start, I've recently released a masterclass on just that topic called Crystal Caverns Masterclass. You can find a link to that below this video. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one.